Hi guys, welcome back to Bro Science. In our last video, we added a bunch of weight to a really understable disc. But that left you guys with some questions. We've got a tech disc, 300 grams more of lead tape, and three questions to answer from you guys. Question one, if we unevenly distribute the weight, like just to one side of the disc, does that change the flight characteristics specifically the wobble. We just took Pete's word for it last time. Wouldn't it automatically affect the flight because you're putting weight everywhere except for a certain spot? So it's like a hula hoop effect? No. Yuli told me that it wouldn't be that way. What kind of science is that? We're going to test it. Second, if we add a bunch of lead tape to it and change the weight, what does it do to spin? Third, someone said, well, if you double the weight of a disc and you throw it just as fast, it's going to go twice as far. Something about mass time acceleration or something like that. I don't know. Feel free to put your guesses in the comments below. We're gonna get started. Drop. All right, I've never actually thrown a tech disc into an open field, so we're gonna get some control shots first. I've heard that the puck being in the middle makes it understable. I'm throwing the force from tech disc right now. <laughs> the disc graph force uh, with the tech disc on it. It's pretty straight. I threw it low, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a little faster, I think. It does add a little understability to it, but on the force, it's not too bad. 59, 60, 62.8, 60.5. So we're sitting, I mean, basically, I, I had one outlier. Everything else is right at 60. I told you last time, guys, trust. This talk speed's like 60. Spin, 1,000 to about 1,100. So 10, 1050 to 1,100 on the spin, on the controls. Okay, experiment one. Uneven distribution, and what does it do to wobble? Um, some of you guys saw the fallout of painting your house with lead paint. And we're very concerned about my well-being just handling this barehanded. So I'm not going to tell you whether or not I'm going to use these gloves to apply it. I will leave that to you, but I'm going to put the gloves on. There it is. Time to apply the tape. Sitting at about 30 grams added weight. So it was 207, or sorry, it was 177, 178 before we applied this lead tape with our gloves on. That ought to be significant enough to test this, right? 30 grams is a lot. It's enough to tell for sure. So around the outside of the rim, and then I just wanted more. So that's the only place I could put it. I didn't want to put it on top because I'm not sure it's going to adhere to itself very well. Okay, wobble of my last, uh, of my, of the four throws that you saw. 1.5, 1.0, that's, that's good, a <laughs> little wobble. 3.5, that's like normal, um, and then 2.9. So, Dakota, math. Averaging around two. Two, let it begin. Okay, I might be a believer in the wobble. That looked wobbly to me. Yeah, okay, so the first one that I threw, I mean, to my eye, it looks more wobbly. Dakota's over here, like... Later you, in the flight, it is for sure extremely wobbly. Yeah, the weird thing is the first one I threw that way, 55 miles an hour, 2.4 wobble. Not bad. That one was 4.8, there, which is a number on wobble I don't often hit. So but, we're going to throw it a couple times, but that one also was 59.7 miles an hour. But the thing is still, it was... It for sure wobbles. Now no, tech the, disc. I wonder at the end of the flight. Right. Like we and we can't them. measure that. Yeah. Tech disc measures like a couple thousand readings, just like a little bit out of your hand. Right? It's not measuring the whole flight. It goes what happened out of your hand and then it extrapolates that data through the rest of the flight. I mean it, it looks wobbly. And so you guys in the comments will answer this. Wouldn't that mean that out of my hand, if it's low wobble, doesn't that mean if it wobbles later that it lost a significant amount of spin during the flight? 
speed like a tire. If a tire is out of balance, once it gets to the speed, you won't notice it as much. But as soon as it gets a certain speed, then you start feeling every little bit. Mm. So maybe it's slowing it down, the spin, and then it's causing that wobble to come in more effectively. Yeah, so the one before that was 57.5 and 6.1 wobble. That one was 7.4 wobble. So one more on this seems definitive that it is wobbling. Now it doesn't tell us why. I'm gonna add a little more speed to this, try to throw it somewhere mid 60s, and uh, let's see what happens to wobble then. It was low, dang. Well, we'll get a good one on the way back. I had more spin on that than the other ones. My other ones had dropped down to uh, like 1,070, and that one was 1,160. Okay, one more. I'm gonna try to get this thing moving. Grip a little harder. I mean, you can see it like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I mean, my speed's getting worse. I feel like I'm throwing it better, but my speed's getting worse. The spin is increasing. 8.3 on the wobble, 58.8. Seems like that one's a done deal. To be fair to Pete, there's a very good possibility that I am not representing his view correctly. Um, because, as you can tell, it's a little bit beyond me. Just a little. Though. All right, experiment two. We are going to take this disc from 177 to 250. Uh, even distribution with the lead tape. And then we're going to see what happens to spin. Oh! That is a brick. It's just tough to move. Ugh. Wobble, still up. 6.7, 6.6. Speed, right now, 56.7 and 57.5. The spin in the 1100s, just barely. No difference. Yeah, let me throw two uh, up to speed, just to see. Let me get two at that 60 mile per hour range. I mean, it is tough. <laughs> I'll tell you, this thing feels heavy. I'm gonna get real fast. It's called overweight training. And that's not where you just eat a bunch of food. It's where you put extra weight on the disc. That should be better. I'm gonna find out. So last two throws. 60.3 and 59.5. So I'm shooting for about 60, so that's pretty decent. Spin, 1123, 11.04. No change. And I don't think those results bode well for our final theory of twice as heavy a disc, 60 miles an hour. If I can get 350 grams up to 60 miles an hour, it's supposed to go twice as far. I have my doubts. I don't, I don't, I almost don't feel like there's a point in trying this one. When you're talking about a disc that requi requires attention to other principles at play here, I don't think we're just talking simple mass times acceleration here. This thing's not a ball. Okay, so I was at what, 255? I don't have to be good at the physics. We're just here to do the testing that you guys cannot do yourselves. We are but guinea pigs that are willing to take our $300 tech disc and a bunch of lead tape and honestly my life at risk. There we go. 372. I gotta get 372 up to 60 miles an hour. And I've gotta try to find like a good line for it too. Doesn't exist. Does not exist for this disc. Experiment number three, bombs away. I tell you, I tell you what, it does take a lot of effort. I did not make it very far. I mean, 60 miles an hour would look like 60 miles an hour in my hand though, wouldn't it? Bro, I'm not even close. 52. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the spin has not changed. I can tell you that much. 52.6. I don't think I'm getting this thing anywhere near 60. But I guarantee you, if I take all this tape off and throw it at 52.6 miles an hour, it's going further than that. If this thing was going twice as far 
at 52 miles an hour right now, it would be on the other side of the field if it was going twice as far. So I don't even need to pull a rangefinder out for this to tell you this thing ain't going any farther at the same 52. But we'll throw it again. We'll give it a good call. Let's try, see how, see how far I can throw it. No shot. 52.1, 1100 speed, high wobble. It was negative 14 degrees of Pfizer. So it was on Anheuser considerably, as you saw. Um, nose angle was good. Negative 0.2, just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. Um, I mean, I don't even need to throw it. 52 miles an hour is 300 feet all day. So if it went twice as far, it'd be going 600 feet. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, hey, that's it for today's episode of Bro Science. Thanks for tuning in. You guys know what to do. Uh, give us your ideas. Things that I would like to try is I'd like to bring the tech disc out here and get how fast do you have to throw to hit different distances. Like for example, I know 52 is 300 feet all day, um, but you guys don't know that. So I'd like to, with data, show you guys uh, things that I look at all the time for when a student says, hey, my goal is to throw 400 feet. And I say, okay, well, you need 60 miles an hour to do that. So you probably need a top speed of 63 if you're going to try to do that consistently. We're here for you guys. So give us your ideas. Give us your critiques. I know you will. So thanks for tuning in. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.